La ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum Allah adds the 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 living al hayy and you know the al here what it does is is it's it's adam wujud al akhir al akhir it denies the existence of any other it's like he's saying it, he is the living there is no life outside of him all life that exists is a, is because of him that's al hayy the, the alif lam has that benefit here Al-Qayyum. Al-Qayyum is the mubalagh, the hyperbolized form of Qa'im. Qa'im. And Qayyum is a rare hyperbolized form. The one who continually and is extremely engaged in keeping things standing. Qa'im ala shay'in, someone who's watching over something and making sure it stays intact. You know when you have a delicate flower or a delicate plant and the farmer has to make sure that it stays intact. He has to put a stick in the ground and it wraps around it and stuff. And he still has to take care of it all the time. This is Qa'im. I'll give you an example of what I explain to kids what Qa'im is. I have my kids put like blocks on one on top of the other. And now there's like 20 blocks. Stable or unstable? It's unstable. And then I let the baby out from the crib. Baby sees blocks, what does he do? Destruction time. You have to be qa'im ala this block. You have to watch over the, the waterfall. It's very fragile. You, and they have to make sure from every angle. And they can't even step on the ground too hard. Because you know, if they step on the ground too hard, it'll shake and it'll fall. This is qa'imun ala shay. You're watching it from falling apart. Allah is qayyum. Constantly watching over all of existence that it wouldn't fall apart. It's constantly. If he doesn't do, if he's not qayyum. If someone qa'im is temporary. Qayyum is excessive. And it's permanent, it's all the time. So it's a disabsifa at the same time. This is, so Allah is the source of all life and He maintains all life and all existence and all harmony. This is Al Hayyul Qayyum. Now understand this ayah will have multiple sentences and they're all, the, the, they're all uh, uh, predicates, they're all khabar. And the mubtada, the subject of all of those sentences is Allah. The first sentence is Allah, la ilaha illa huwa. Allah, Al Hayyul Qayyum. Allah لا تأخذه سيرة ولا نوم Allah له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض Allah من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه It's like that. All the sentences go back to Allah عز وجل. Another beautiful thing you'll notice about this ayah, there'll be twos of everything. So many things are mentioned in twos. First of all, Allah, there's no one to be worshipped except He. Two attributes, Al-Hay and Al-Qayyum. Then He says لا تأخذه سيرة And you know, when someone's watching over something, like a guard watching over something. And what happens to security guards all the time? They fall asleep. You know, my, my friend had a security guard, jo guard job, the best job he ever had. He said, the best sleep of my life. He studied for his entire college like career, didn't go to libraries by himself, nobody bothers him, he's got an internet connection. There's CCTV over there, nobody's looking at him, he's just doing his homework, and he gets some sleep, and he can, whatever. Guards are known for falling asleep. Allah says, La ta'khuduhu sinatun. He's alive, and he's watchful, and sleepiness, drowsiness. Sina is what comes before sleep. And it happens because when you're exhausted, when you're tired. So you're watching over something, you're guarding it all the time, you can get tired, that's why they have shifts. Allah says for him, he doesn't get tired. He doesn't even get the, the, the whiff of sleepiness. Well, I know, nor sleep itself. And by the way, we learn in, in um, Sunnah tradition, when we wake up from sleep, what do we, what dua we make? Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana Sleep is a form of death. But Allah has already established Himself as the all-living. The permanently living. So even the, the, the resemblance of death, which is sleep, doesn't even come close to Him. لا تأخذه سرة ولا نوم Nor any sleep. And you know the line between لا تأخذه سرة ولا نوم implies those two things together or by themselves never come to Him. If you say لا تأخذه سرة ولا نوم if you just don't put a ladder in the middle, you know what that means? Both, if they come together, it doesn't get him. But it might get him one at a time. So you put la and la, because the, whether they come together or apart, they can never get to him. Those two things will never happen to him. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil. And why should he watch over everything? When you watch over something, and you know, there, is there a difference between someone who watches over things they own and someone who watches over things they don't own? You ask your friend to look over your car. Take care of your car for the weekend. Or he'll take care of it all right. Right? Look, if you could start it after the weekend. If it's not yours, you don't take care of it well. If it's yours, you take extra care of it. 
And the more you value something, the more you take care of it. Allah Azza wa Jal values His creation. He loves His creation. And He tells us what motivation does He have to watch over it like this, to preserve its life like this. The next part of the ayah tells us, Allahu lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard. He exclusively owns whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth. Look at the word ma. Ma is what, what the Arab call ashmal. It's more inclusive. Ashmal means more inclusive. The word men is only used for living things, or intellectual creatures, like human beings, jinn, angels. Ma includes them and other things. So the more comprehensive, whatever and whoever, that's how I would translate that. Because when I say whatever, then you might just think it's for the objects only. But the ma includes the men. So whatever and whoever exists inside the skies and the earth, he has inclusive, or exclusive ownership of them. Now, when he has exclusive ownership over everything, who's left to come and make a case? Man indahu. If he's the owner of everything, the one in trouble is his property, and the one who's trying to get the guy out of trouble is also his property. You know, an equal can make a case. Understand this point. There are two bosses in a company. There are two owners in a company, equal 50% owners. One boss says, fire me. I'm the secretary. One boss says, fire me. The other boss says, no, 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 actually, he's good. Give him another chance. So the one boss who's angry might even say, you know what? OK, just because you're saying it, you're my equal. We're partners. I trust you. I'll take your word for it, right? When there's an equal, you might take their opinion more. And you might back off and say, you know what? I'll give this guy another chance. There is no equal to Allah. Everyone other than Allah is owned by him. Who's going to? Man dha ladhi yashfa'u. Then there's man dha. Not man ladhi yashfa'u. Man dha ladhi yashfa'u. Man dha means who dare. Who dare. You know, like if there's a, I, I give you these funny scenarios so you can understand these words better, OK? So not, not because they're part of a tafsir I read. <laughs> there's some wrestler, and he beat all his opponents. And he's standing in the middle of the ring. He says, who else? Who's going to fight? Man dha ladhi. Who's going to be the one? He won't say manil ladhi, he'll say manda is challenging. It's manda. Allah is challenging humanity. Who's going to come and make shafa? Anyone want to come make a case? Manda ladhi ashfa. Who's going to make a case for somebody else? Who's out there? Anyone? Ch challenging. Then there's man dha can be considered short for hadha. Now hadha is a pointing word, means this. But ha is considered adatu tanbi. It's there to add extra attention to the word. Getting rid of it, the original word is just the. It's just the. If you take that meaning of it, then it says man it means who's this? That's going to make shafa'a. It's like Allah is pointing at these idols and saying, who are they? You think this is going to make shafa'a for you? You think this is what's going to bring, you know, uh, save you before me? Man that's the other meaning of it. Man who's the one who's going to make a case? Indahu, with him. Inna bi idnihi, except by his permission. Even the messenger does not open his mouth until Allah says, you may speak. إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانِ وَقَالَ صَوَابَ And even when Allah gives permission, he has to say the only thing that is right. He can't make stuff up just to win a case. You know, lawyers do that all the time, right? They say whatever it takes to win the case. Even when Allah gives him permission to speak, he can only speak what Allah has given him permission to say. He'll say the right thing 100%. And that 100% will include, he will make a case for some people, and he'll make a case against some people. So this is, this is illa uh, bi'idnihi. Uh, then he says, ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. This is so awesome how Allah adds this. You know, shafa'a, making a case for someone, a lot of times it depends upon what the one who is trying to protect someone knows. They'll come to the boss and say, boss, I know he came late, but he's good. I know him, I know him for a long time. You don't know what I know. Who's going to come say that to Allah? He knows what's in front of them and what's behind them. Who's going to come and say, I know a backstory. I know the record looks bad. I know the transcript looks bad. But there's more to this student. It's not just the bad scores. There's more. He's hardworking. He does his homework. He stays up late at night trying to review. Yes, he doesn't get it. But I know he's good. I know he's good. Who's going to come try to make a case like that before Allah? He already knows. يَعْلَمُوا أَبَيْنَا أَدِيهِمْ What is right in front of them? And what's behind them means he knows what's obvious and what's not obvious. He knows the present and the future and he knows the past. 
Nobody will come and tell Allah something he doesn't already know. And that's the entire hope of a Shafi'ah, to be able to tell the one who's about to punish, listen, you don't know something I think you should know before you consider punishing. Who's going to come and do that? Then on top of that, the Shafi'ah, the one who wants to make Shafi'ah, hopes that they know something. Or they, they, they can bring some new information that will save the case. And Allah adds, not only do I know everything you're about to tell me, I know things you don't know. And they have no way to encircle, encompass anything that he, is, he has in his knowledge. <laughs> Not only do, you, do I know what, everything you're about to say, but I know more about him, even the goods that you didn't mention, I know those too. And when I've decided to punish him, I've taken everything into consideration. The things you thought of saying and the things you didn't think of saying. And the crimes you know of and the crimes you don't know of, I know all of them. So Allah says, and they have no way to encircle anything of his knowledge except for whatever he may want. Illa bima sha'a. There's a very powerful understanding and lesson in our tawheed, in our belief in Allah, in our iman in Allah. We have no way to encompass certain things that Allah knows except the little droplets he might give us. What is the ruh? The human being will exhaust his studies in psychology. Before it used to be philosophy. Then it evolved into psychology. All these, effort, all these different schools of thought, universities, researchers, trying to figure out what is the human personality. You know there's still no consensus on what human personality is? There are multiple definitions in psychology. There's no one agreement. Because the human personality is rooted in the ruh. And Allah says, وَمَا أُوتِيتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You haven't been given with knowledge, except from knowledge except very little bit. You don't have a lot. You've been given very little. Allah knows so much more about the Akhirah than He told us. We know very little. Allah knows so much more about our own selves than we know about ourselves. People go to, to hypnotists and people go to psychiatrists and figure out what's going on in my head? Why do I have these thoughts? Why do I have that weird dream all the time? People don't even know themselves. Allah knows them better than they know themselves. What to speak of anything else? وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ and then people question Allah's wisdom. How come Allah says this? How come Allah says that? How come He made hellfire? How come He made paradise? How come He put this in paradise? How come He put in, didn't put that in paradise? How come He doesn't mention this in the Qur'an? How come He mentions that in the Qur'an? Allah says, you've been given very little. And just because I haven't mentioned it doesn't mean that it's not been taken care of. You just have to admit the fact that you know very, very, very little. And whatever little you know is because Allah wanted you to know. Otherwise, you wouldn't even have that. Illa bi sha'a. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ His throne, his kursi, expands to the skies and the earth. And you know, the moment you hear that, you're like, what does that mean? What throne? How does that work? Does it have four, four legs, like a chair? Or what kind of throne is that? You know, the answer to that question is the part of the ayah right before. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءَ they don't have any way to encircle his knowledge except for very little that he gives them. And he tells them now he has a throne. And then you hear he has a throne, Ya Allah, I don't know what that is, but I believe it. He set our attitude straight before he said it. And so when people try to go and get into that discourse, they're missing the point of the ayah. The whole point of the ayah is there are some things you don't know, don't get into them. You can't know that stuff. His, his throne expands. It, it expands. It's the skies and the earth. And their guarding, their protection does not exhaust him, does not get to him. Either Ya'udu to guard over something over a long time and get tired. He doesn't, that doesn't get to him. And of course, Allah mentions at the end, He is Al Ali. The high, the ultimately high. Of course, if his throne is, is expanse of the skies and the earth, then he's above the throne, he's above, he's high. And how great he is, what a great throne he has. What a colossal throne he has. So, the surah began, the ayah began with two names, al hayyul qayyum It ends with two names, al Ali al azim And both, four attributes now, four attributes of Allah. Every bit of this ayah you read, you appreciate those four attributes over and over again. So for example, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa. Two things, al-hayyul qayyum and al-aliyul azim. 
la ta'khudhuhu sinatun wa la nawm because he is al-hayyul qayyum and because he is al-aliyul azim lahu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard only he can own it al-hayyul qayyum everything is continuing to exist because he's alive and he's keeping it and how greatly he's keeping it together al-aliyul azim man dha alladhi yashfa'u 'indahu illa bi idhnihi who's going to come and make shafa'a with him he's the he's the all living he's the one who will grant life he's the one who maintains and and gives validation illa bi idhni and who will come before this high king al ali al azim who's going to dare speak then ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum al ali al azim al hayyul qayyum al ali al azim over and over and over again these attributes of allah are highlighted and now inshallah now that we've we've gone at least a cursory look at you know this this powerful ayah see how everything after this ayah is going to be connected